Last, London's fashionable set has made its return. And it seems that our bon ton is moving with the changing tide. So I wanted to start by asking you, obviously, Eloise and Penelope are on the outs this season. Um, I was wondering, I understand that you're really close to Nicola, what that was like in the filming process and whether you thought that was kind of necessary for her character to get closer to Colin, the romance arc. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> me and Nicola really enjoy doing stuff like that. Like, obviously there's that big, massive fallout that they have at the end of season two. We really loved it. Yeah. In between takes, we would have a cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute, we'd be like, quick one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we do enjoy, it does feel weird to not, because I've been so used to spending all of my time with Nicola on yeah. set. So it, it did feel weird, but we really enjoy being able to like do that. It's exciting to read in a script. It's like fun yeah. for us as actors. Yeah. And then <clears throat> I think it's really important for both of them to find out who they are a bit. Cause they, I, you know, Eloise really leans on Penelope. She's like a really big column in her life yeah. and that she, you know, she gets a lot of support from her. I think she gets a good pair of ears off of Penelope. But I do think it's important for Eloise to find out, sort of streamline all of her beliefs a little bit and find out who she is. Mm. And yes, I think she would have been the ultimate cock block uh, for, <laughs> yeah. uh, for Penelope had she would been around and be like, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> Still. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I do think it's helpful for yeah. Penelope as well. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and obviously you're joining the cast this season uh, and it's, you know, it's not just any show that you're joining this the costuming, the, I mean, so many, com like the learning, the dancers and all mm -hmm. of that. So I was wondering what was the kind of biggest learning curve for, for coming in? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's a little bit scary, isn't it? <laughs> <this>? um, <laughs> just a bit. Um, the piano. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the fear like comes yeah, back. Just, yeah, and not just yeah, exactly. Not just a bit of piano. So that is you like doing yeah, it. She's doing it. Um, wow. I'm doing it. I'm not. I'm not sure what you hear is me. <laughs> <laughs> no, just say it is. Just say it is. That it's is me. me. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I wrote that song. Uh, <laughs> not believable. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that was probably the biggest learning curve. Yeah. Oh my God, we've gone insane, it's Thursday. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. You're getting That's a rough life. <laughs> oh. um, and, you know, <laughs> your character is, our Cressida is obviously also coming to the fore. Um, I was wondering kind of what that was like mm. when you were kind of reading these scripts and yeah, <laughs> learning amazing. that you were gonna, yeah. <laughs> it was, yeah, a big surprise. Um, I was told there was gonna be some more of Cressida, but yeah. I never, mm. I never could have, imagined or had hoped mm. i mean i feel like you you have hopes in life and then oh. if they get exceeded it's like oh. <laughs> like what <laughs> <laughs> you know so um yeah that was a magic that was magic and then to to see that i was working with claudia was like but yeah, i couldn't i couldn't have asked for more yeah. or a more perfect year of my life really oh. yeah <laughs> Cheesy <laughs> bunch we are. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and it's, it's obviously after <clears throat> the first two seasons quite an unlikely friendship between Eloise and Cressida. And I think that it's really nice that it acknowledges how women are pitted against each other in this setting. But you still get those moments of Cressida kind of sabotaging Penelope. I was <laughs> wondering what you made of that, like that tension in the characterization. Yeah, she's she's had a tough time and i think we see that at home you know she is a product of her environment mm -hmm. and her nature has grown in such a way because of that and so there are still elements of her cruelty around um but it lessens yeah. as as eloise shows her that that's not uh, not the way to be doing <laughs> things and and she listens to that and takes it on board and her naivety to that, I think, is actually quite funny when she's like, oh, I thought we didn't like her. <laughs> like, it was normal and okay. She just hasn't really computed that that's just not yeah. not okay, actually. Yeah. Um, so we see her grow and and there is hope for her. Yeah. <laughs> Until. <laughs> um, yeah. I wanted to start by asking um, about kind of Violet and Agatha's relationship after that. We obviously, at the end of Queen Charlotte, we saw that moment of recognition where Violet realizes that there was some kind of relationship between her father and Agatha. I was wondering kind of what the aftermath of their friendship I, is. I would, I, I think with, uh, not giving too much away, I think that uh, it has certainly shaped their friendship mm. um, because we sort of put it to bed without kind of sort of 
getting to the nitty gritty. And I think there's room for kind of exploration there, really. Yeah. There's more, there, there's, there's more to come. Yeah. <laughs> it's very to say that. A tease. <laughs> Wait and see. <laughs> and then we, we last saw the Queen kind of in that really magnificent scene under the bed in Queen Charlotte, which makes you, well, it's really it's a tearjerker. I was wondering what is in store for in that respect, whether we could see more of like the King and Queen's relationship as yeah, well. Yeah, I hope so. I yeah. hope so. I think it's really important to uh, give her a rounded storyline. You know, it's all very well, you know, you have the Queen at the balls and stuff and mm. the, the, the wigs and the, the costume. I think it's really lovely to have um, George come in and you see behind the scenes and you see a more vulnerable side mm -hmm. of her. Um, do you remember in I season think be two? Really lovely. Where um, uh, it, Charithra's in a scene. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember yeah, when yeah. George comes, comes in? in. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's that, I think it's that thing that for the rest of us mm -hmm. to hold on to the fact that we know that underneath all of the Queen's statuesque mm -hmm. pronouncements and eyebrow raising and all of that, it's there is this time. really vulnerable vibration of mm -hmm. what's going on for her domestically. Yeah. Um, and it's really touching when you have those moments where it just bursts in on the pomp yeah, and absolutely. deflates it and there's, you see the human. The difference between the private and the public yeah. for mm. her. And I think the more we get to see a little bit of the private will inform the public. Because mm. I was wondering whether going into this season after having that extra insight into your characters from Queen Charlotte, was it different getting like a new perspective on them? It, it was really tricky because we were filming at the same time. Oh, right. We were okay. filming Charlotte, Queen Charlotte, A Bridges and Story, and season three at the same time. Mm. So in, in, in some respects, we were living the informed bits for, the, for this season coming out, So, mm. which probably has a different take on how you don't kind of come to the party with something, being informed about something, you're, you're in it. Mm. <laughs> so it yeah. was kind of a strange way to do it. Yeah. But, helpful yeah and enriching i think for the mm. audience and for us so we you know we're we're operating with with that extra juice of knowledge that we mm. have but the audience is, is following us and when they see what happens in season three they can kind of do a bit of an uh, aha okay mm -hmm. i get that oh and i remember when you were 25 or you were 12 and you know what mm -hmm. what that was and how you've you've moved because it's always lovely to i love that thing where you you know, you might have photographs of your parents when they're teenagers. Yeah. You know, when you had nothing to do with anything of their lives. Mm -hmm. And you just see this whole, you start to see the whole person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's always lovely. Yeah. So, sure. And obviously you're both taking up, taking on like a bigger part in this season mm -hmm. um, with the Mondrich's change in fortune. I was wondering what that was like when you kind of, was it like reading the scripts and seeing, that you, after kind of two seasons of having these financial difficulties, that it was going all going to change for your characters. Yeah, it felt like a nice progression of our story mm. and to see where we've come from and to see where we potentially could go. And it mm. felt like, um, just felt right. It felt like in order for these characters to kind of, I don't know, be grounded, they needed some kind of initiation into the ton. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Mm. I think it's um it gives us so much more room to interact with your the well loved mm. characters yeah. and um that's been really nice. Mm. Shonda Rhimes has kind of spoken about how she wants to do eight seasons with every sibling having a, a, a you know, romance. And we kind of that's seen the big- Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the top off the Wait. presses. She's <laughs> just said that in the corridor. Um, uh, and I was wondering, we kind of see Francesca having the beginnings of, you know, a spark with someone. Um, but you, it, you conscious that maybe she could have her own mm. arc is that, what are your thoughts on? on that kind of board. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, right now I can't even like contemplate that. I'm just like trying to get through one day yeah. at a time. Um, <laughs> and it's, a, it's such a beautiful book. I loved Francesca's story. Mm. So it would be such a privilege to get to tell that one yeah. day. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's a heavy one. Yeah. She's got some, some bits coming up for her in life. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it would be amazing, as would, I think everybody feels that way, don't they? Oh. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna ask, cause obviously, I don't know how involved you all are in like the fan, th obviously the fans love the show, but um, there are a lot of theories that maybe the next season could be Eloise's story. Um, I'm not gonna ask you. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't but... move your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Um, <Don't> <laughs> yeah. I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess having seen like Nicola, <laughs> like come into being the, the main character in this mm. season, and what you're, how you're feeling about maybe stepping up into that role yourself? Yeah, I mean, if if ever that happens, I'm, I've had a good old run up. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's the people that have come before that yes. have shown us all how to do it. Mm -hmm. Phoebe took it on really beautifully, like really, really beautifully. She did such an incredible job kicking off this show. And Johnny and Simone, and obviously Reggae from season one as well. And then. Nicola and Luke, yeah. <clears throat> it's, uh, the thing is more than anything as well, this show is an ensemble piece mm. uh, filled with so many people. Yeah. Um, so I really feel like each season, everyone gets an opportunity to shine anyway. Yeah. But yeah, I feel grateful for the, for the run up really. Mm. But I won't tell you anything. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> like, yes, I don't tick. actually know the answer. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, and we, I mean, Cressida's hair, just wanted to <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> because it is really one of those things where you think that you've seen it all and then they, they're costumed, <laughs> but they just keep topping. Like, what is that? I know. How involved are you in that? What is that like? I just let them do, do, yeah. do their magic yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> surprised every time. They just up it constantly. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some unbelievable yeah. ones this season. Yeah. I've got all sorts of hanging off and there's, I can't, I don't want to say, but there's some serious craft yeah, going into artistry. the piece. Yeah. One uh, thing I can say, because it wasn't used, is oh, there yeah. was going to be an, um, a, there was a top hat made. Oh, wow. Oh, out of hair. Yeah. Out of hair. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah, it was, really it was amazing. amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, you're in for a treat. To have Release hair. that scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And we all sit next to each other in the makeup truck as well. Yeah, okay. So we all get to see all the mud stuff that's going on. <laughs> um, and then I just wanted to ask about kind of what do you think the fans can expect from the back half of the season? Um, yeah. I guess like thematically or <laughs> yeah, anything that you could tease about what's coming. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just gonna say it stays very true to the friends. Yeah. To lovers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to give you. Yeah, like yeah. friends, yeah. it's like development. Yeah. Lovers. Okay. But you and, what about you and Penelope? Or Eloise and Penelope? Friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be a twist. Um, love it. Uh, <laughs> that's like the ultimate cock as well, isn't it? It's actually me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't want the fans to lose hope. Just okay. don't lose hope okay. in, the, in Penelope. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there's a bit of a, there's going to be a bit of a hill to climb before okay. I think everyone's okay. okay with everything. We've got a new introduction of Lord Marcus. There's kind of obviously a bit of a spark between him and Violet. I was wondering what your thoughts were on, because so far in Bridgeton proper, we've not really seen any of your characters have like proper romance mm. arcs. What yes. that was like kind of getting to dive into that side of it. Well, it'll be interesting to see where it goes, but it's. But I think what's lovely for Violet's character is, is the opportunity to start to embrace life again, which is mm. where we left her in Queen Charlotte, yeah. you know, having married off two children and seeing them very happily married. It's like a, a, having a mirror held up to her own life, which mm. has been bereft of Edmund for so long. And it's and so it's nice to embark on this season with the idea of being slightly more open. She's gonna be very tentative, this lady. Yeah. But it's nice to be, it, it's nice to, Dip your toe in. Dip your toe in the water. Because <laughs> um, in Queen Charlotte, there's a like, just absolute howler of a line from Violet where she says, I nearly asked your footman to lie on me. Um, and I was wondering, with that, that in mind, yeah. <laughs> put that on a shirt, it's hilarious. Um, with that in mind, uh, would you be, uh, all of you, I guess, be open to kind of doing more intimate scenes? Obviously, that's one of the staples of Bridgerton. And yeah, was that something that you did? I think. People of all ages have sex. They, they do. And have sexual right. relationships. Yeah. I'm not and, so sure I want to <laughs> get my ass on telly for anyone. Oh, Ruth, <laughs> come on. It's a lovely ass. <laughs> um, but, so, but, I, but I do think it's, you know, 
it's, it, it's, it's, all, it's part of our lives for as long as we want it to be part of our yeah. lives. Mm. And so I think it's nice for the whole range of audience that watch the, sh watch the show mm. to have the opportunity to see that their lives reflected in our lives in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the Queen and Brimsley, obviously, again, Queen Charlotte coming off that and seeing more of that relationship. I was wondering, uh, I guess, filming at the same time, what that what that was like, having that depth of understanding of his character and we, when we see him in these kind of small moments, just knowing everything that's gone on behind uh, behind the scenes in the past. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to be able to show the work that Hugh and I have been doing right from the beginning. Mm. You know, he is the silent companion uh, for the majority of season one and season two. You know, Queen Charlotte gave him the voice that he so uh, desperately needed. In my opinion, Hugh Sachs is one of our greatest actors in this country. Um, he's a seasoned actor, stage actor as well. Um, so for him to be able to really flex his muscles and um, show the world what he can do is, is brilliant. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been wanting for, you know, right from the beginning. But it's really interesting when, you know, you first get a character and you do all the backstory and you do all the kind of this is where she came from and she has 14, 15 children and blah, blah, have her husband's going mad to then actually see the 14, 15 children sitting in front of you, <laughs> you know, and finding uh, Shonda's amazing voice and writing. And yeah, that was... Uh, that was really great and that kind of adds into you know uh, the Queen and Brimsley as well to kind of have that Shonda kind of show us what we've been chatting about for three years yeah it was great it's great it's really important I think yeah. for him to have his voice yeah it's well. nice to see a bit of spark between, you know there's more and more of that creeping in yeah and you lovely. understand that relationship yeah. you know there is more it's there's a lot more to it than mm. you know. and the sacrifice of it yeah ac absolutely mm. that he yeah. sacrifices mm. his life his love for the queen for you know the dedication to her yeah and and you know that's um I don't know if we get that in uh, so much in um, public life these days, but that that yeah. that that notion of duty mm. and service, and that you take it seriously enough to commit your whole life to it. Mm. You know, he he completely embodies that, doesn't mm. he? Absolutely. Yeah, and so does the Queen as well. Yeah. The Mondwich is now one of the only marriages. Obviously, the show is so focused on blossoming romances and getting to the point of marriages, and yeah. then you're already your character's are already there. I was wondering what that was like in kind of contrast, taking on a new storyline that we've not really seen before. And mm. there's such a uh, there's a strain of thought in like romances that watch seeing people married is, is that bit's boring. So, yeah. but then you're ma like managing to find like tension in that. I think what. Um, challenging for Will and Alice is is navigating this new world mm. um, and trying to solidify some kind of uh, longevity in this world. Mm. And I think that's the thing that's interesting to watch. Um, mm. And will they will they come up to, will they be accepted by this society or, mm. or won't they? And yeah. how far are they willing to go or compromise in what maybe their values are to yeah. to stay there mm. and i think that is just as interesting as um the budding romances of yeah mm. some of the other characters yeah and what is true love you know what i mean what is yeah. true love what is freedom yeah. to express love and how do we express love and i think that's quite that's been interesting to kind of under like try to understand like how do we therefore how, like, do we hold hands? Do we, yeah. like, what are, what's the language now? Mm. What's, the, what's our love language yeah. now in this new kind of setting? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. quite interesting. Yeah.